Today we're talking about NumPy, numeric Python. So to do this, the first thing you have to do, of course, is to import the NumPy module. And we'll do the standard thing and we'll use the alias NP so that we don't have to keep writing out the whole word NumPy all the time. So there we go, import NumPy as NP. Okay, so to get started, we need to have a list. Uh, I'll call it L list of the integers from one to five. And that's simply easy. L list is one, two, three, four, five, and I print L list and I get one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're gonna create an equivalent array with the same numbers. And the function to do that is to apply np.array to l list. So here we go. A underscore array is np.array of l list. And then I print out a underscore array and I get one, two, three, four, five. And you notice the difference is that uh, the array, the things that you see are not separated by commas. And let's look at the first element of the list. I get a 1, and I get to it with this bracket 0. And to get the first element of the array, it's the same thing. It's bracket 0. And to get the last thing of the list, I use negative indexing. Uh, L underscore list of minus 1 is 5, and A underscore array of minus 1 is 5. Now I want to try slicing to print the second through fourth elements of both of these. Okay, take a few minutes. Uh, this re probably requires a little bit of thinking. So stop the video and come back here when you're done. Okay, you're back. I assume you did your work. So to do what we want, we go from 1 colon 4 and the results that we get is 2, 3, 4. And A underscore array, 1 colon 4, is 2, 3, 4. And again, uh, slicing works the same way with arrays as it does with the list. So we want to see some differences. What happens if you add two copies of a list? Go ahead and do that, and then come back when you're done, OK? Yeah, you stopped the video, right? Yeah, OK. You're back. I assume you did your assignment. So I added L underscore list to L underscore list, and what did I get? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Essentially, I get two copies of the original list within a single list. Plus means concatenation with lists. What happens if you add two copies of a NumPy array? Okay, stop the video, do your work. Come back and look when you're done. You're back. I assume you did your work. Let's take a look. If I add the two arrays, what I get is the 1 and the 1 added up to 2, the 2 and the 2 added up to a 4, and so on. What happened is that you get element-wise addition. The first element here added to the first element here and so on. What happens if you multiply a NumPy array containing numbers by a constant? Well, let's take a look. 3 times uh, the NumPy array gives me 3 multiplied by, <clears throat> by 1 gave me a 3, 3 multiplied by 2 gave me a 6, and again what you see is element-wise operations. And if you do the same thing with a list, you get three times <coughs> L underscore list. <coughs> and I just get three copies. If it, <coughs> it is as though I wrote L list plus L list plus L list. So it's completely consistent with what happens when you uh, use the plus symbol with two lists. But this is only possible, um, well, 
The general rule with NumPy arrays is that everything takes place element-wise. It's supplied to each element exactly the same as it's applied to every other element. But that's only possible if the same operation can be applied to each element. What happens if you replace the second element of L underscore list with a string instead of a number? Can you still create an array from it? Well, let's try. Okay. Go ahead and do that, and then come back and look when you're done. Okay, you're back. So here I've changed the second element of L list to be a string. And I print L list, and what happens? I've got the integer 1, the string 2, the integer 3, and the integer 4, and the integer 5. And if I print out uh, both the thing in the list and the type of the thing in the list, what I see is that the first thing is an integer, the second thing is an str. Okay? So produce the NumPy array and look at the elements types of its elements. What do I get? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they're all enclosed in quotes. So I do the same thing with the array for i in a underscore array, print i and type of i. And I don't quite get string. I get something, the class is something called numpy.string underscore. And that's not exactly the same as a string, but it's real close. We're not going to dig deeper into that. Vectorize arithmetic. Recall the basic computation of area for a rectangular figure. Area is length times width. So just refresh your mind. Compute the area for a rectangle with a length of 5 and a width of 7 using Python. Okay, stop the video for a second or two and go ahead and do that and come back. Okay, you're back. I assume you've done your work. Length is 5, width is 7. <clears throat> area is length times width. You print the area and I get 35. If you had a number of rectangular fingers with their lengths in one list and their widths in another list, we could compute their areas by looping through the two lists with indices and putting the areas in a third width in a third list. So here's my width, here's my length, and I start area as an empty list, and then I iterate uh, on the range of the length of width, and Every time I come across a new index i, I took the, take the width at the ith position and the length at the ith position, multiply them together, compute that number, and append it to the list area. And what I get is 20, 45, 80, 125. The arithmetic is obvious. Okay, so you've done the uh, tutorial in data camp so show how the for loop can be avoided using numpy arrays instead of lists so go ahead do that come back when you're done stop the video of course okay you're back so area is np dot array of length times np dot array of width and the operations were done element-wise. 20, 45, 80, 125. The same results that we got. Of course, <coughs> it only takes one line of code to do that. But that's not the big advantage of doing this. The, uh, when you do this with interpreted code using a for loop, you're really doing a lot of extra work. And if you do this with um, NP arrays, what happens is that you're doing the same for loop at some at some level, but that for loop is actually being executed in very fast optimized code written in C. And you always want to get away from the interpreter as fast as you can and get to the underlying optimal code. Trivial examples like this, you're not going to see any difference at all. You, you'd be very difficult to measure it unless you did this uh, hundreds of thousands of times. But in real world programs, things are getting done hundreds of, th hundreds of thousands, millions of times, billions of times, 
and it's important to keep your code optimal if you're doing something like artificial intelligence or machine learning. Create a three-dimensional NumPy array. And I'll think of an example. Uh, the numbers in the array would represent things to be reported on a monthly basis over the life of a three-year project. This might be expenditures or a fraction of the project done at this point in time or whatever. But we'll start off using this utility function a range um, to get to directly get a, a numpy array and items is a numpy array so I didn't have to create a list of 36 items and then convert it to a numpy array the function a range np dot a range gives me a a uh, numpy array directly and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a three-dimensional array, year, quarter, and month. So I use the reshape function, year, three, quarters, four, and then for every quarter we have three months. And now I print items 3D, and here you see the first year, okay, the first 12 months, numbered 0 from 11, and here you see the first quarter in the first year, and then the first month within the first quarter in the first year. Okay, so every year is represented by a two-dimensional array, and within a year, a quarter is represented by a one-dimensional array. So now we have to use a proper index to obtain, uh, I have to fix that spelling, Abtain should be obtained the value stored in the second month of the third quarter of the third year. Remember that Python starts indexing at 0 instead of 1. Also remember that the dimensions are year, quarter, and month. 3, 4, 3. But the first 3 is year, the 4 is quarter, and then, then, the, then there are 3 months with your work, then come back. Okay, you're back. I assume that you have done your work. Two, two, one are the proper indexes to get what we wanted. Everybody understands where the two came from, where this two came from, and where this one came from. If you don't, go back and look and think about Python's indexes being offset by the way you typically think about numbers. Verify, of course, that this 31 is correct, that it did what we wanted. Okay. Now, use slicing to print out the entire second year. Stop the video, do your work, and come back and look. Okay, you're back. Here's the entire second year. The index for year 2, of course, is 1 and then you want all of the quarters and all of the months and there is the entire second year. Okay, now you slicing to print out all of the December values. Think about how you identify a value as being belonging to December given that year, quarter, month structure. Stop the video, come back when you're done. Okay, you're back. I assume you're done. And the way we get uh, a December, all the years, and in every year we want the, the fourth quarter, so it's index 3, and the third month in the fourth quarter, so it's index 2. And you can verify, go back and look at the original 3D uh, items list and see that 11, 23, and 35 are all of the indexes for the Decembers. Okay, next problem, use slicing to print out all second quarter values. Stop the video, do your work, come back when you're done. And there we are, all years all second quarters, so we always want an index of one in the quarter position, and then all months. Okay. 
Aggregates, um, second aspect of vectorized arithmetic. Some functions applied to a NumPy array return a single numerical value used to describe some aspect of the set of numbers in the array. And the most common examples, the first ones you meet, are uh, np.sum and np.mean. So let's compute the sum and the mean value of the numbers in the NumPy array items. Okay, stop the video, do your work, Come back when you're done. And there we are. Print the sum of the items, np.sum of items, and I get 630. And print np.mean of items, and I get 17.5. Okay, that was easy enough.